I'll see you guys in the dark. When I was 19, my parents came to visit me during one of my college breaks. They stayed at a Holiday Inn, which surprisingly was nice given that it was located in a seedy section of town right off of I-95. After a day of doing various activities throughout the city, we retired to their hotel room to order some pizza and watch some amazing basic hotel cable. After some quality time spent with the folks, I grabbed the leftover pizza and walked to my truck, which was only about 20 yards away from their room. I got into the truck and started her up, ready to head back to my apartment, when I was greeted with a quick knock on the window. It was a middle-aged white woman who was a little weathered-looking. I rolled down the window about halfway, and she started with one of those fake-ass stories every panhandler or bum starts off with. The kind where you immediately start tuning out after the first few words because you know it's complete and utter bullshit. I cut her off, blurting out some excuse as to why I couldn't drive her to the gas station. At least I think that's what she needed. She took it surprisingly well, then saw the pizza box sitting in the passenger seat. Her eyes brightened and asked me if she could have a slice. I told her no, that I didn't have much food, and this is true, I was a poor college student, and that I loved pizza so much. She then licked her lips and told me, If you give me a ride to the store and a slice of that pizza, I'll suck your manhood. For whatever reason, I was completely flabbergasted by this random comment, and all I remember doing is grabbing a fistful of change out of my cup holder and basically chucking it at her and driving off. Not sure why I reacted like that. To this day, almost eight years later, I'm still reminded of this encounter because I have a squeaky noise when I roll down my driver's window because I have a squeaky noise when I roll down my driver's side window, because a coin got lodged in there when I threw the change at her. I still laugh at it today, because given the proximity of my parents' hotel room, they couldn't have stepped out at any time, and would have seen their son being solicited by some hooker who gives out BJs for pizza. So, hooker at the hotel room, please, let's not meet again. You freaked me the hell out. I'll make this short. This happened back in 2012. I was a recent transplant to Northern California, and I had recently lost my job and headed to the Bay Area. I decided while I was looking for a job in SF, I'd stay in a motel six in East Oakland with my pit bull, Mick Jeromeo. One night, I decided to walk about a quarter mile up the road to Jack in the Box with my pit for a late night snack. On my way back, as I'm walking across the entrance to an abandoned hotel, a shitty little Ford Focus cuts in front of me, cuts me off, and stops. I don't know if my explanation will do the next part justice, but I'll try. Out of the car hops an overweight lady dressed like a drag queen with shabby clothing. The reds were frayed. There were old stains on her shirt, and her hair was a mess. Before I could see her face, she started talking to me. It was almost like she was hiding her face. The words I could make out of her garbled sentence were date and baby. It sounded like she had a mouthful of marbles. I tried to ignore her and continue walking, but she cut me off again, with her body this time, and tried to touch my arm. When she reached for my arm, I got a glimpse of her face. This is when I got freaked out. She was a black lady, like Denzel's shade. Her face was riddled with what looked like open sores and pock marks. There was a sheen of liquid that covered her entire face that looked like a pus and blood mix. It had green and pink tint to it. I noticed this on the back of her hands, too. You can imagine that I was thoroughly disgusted. I instantly went into flight mode, sidestepped her, and dragged Rome away from her quickly. She protested with a mouthful of jibber-jabber, but I kept moving quickly. I looked back to see her car pulling out and heading in the opposite direction. So crackhead prostitute zombie lady, let's not meet ever again. Some of this information is a little fuzzy, but this is what happened to my mom around 1989. I was around 19 or 20 years old at this time. My mom moved to Manitoba, Canada to stay with her aunt 
and uncle until she worked. The company she worked at was on the top three floors of an office building on Portage Avenue. It was located on the same level as the cafe, so everyone came up to their floor and walked past its reception desk if they wanted something to eat. The receptionist would often ask my mom to cover for her while she went to her lunch break. While taking over one day, a handsome Middle Eastern man came up to her and struck up a conversation. He was around his 40s, dressed sharply, was very charming, and said he worked in a company a few floors down. He commented on how attractive she was and asked if she wanted to do any modeling for his company. He handed her his business card and left. She was not sketched out by the dude because he seemed so normal, but asked both her mom and aunt what she should do. They both told her to go for it, but to call the Better Business Bureau to see if the business was actually legitimate. According to the BBB, it was real. The next day, while my mom was working the desk, he approached her again and asked if she put any thought into the offer. He asked to meet her for lunch the next day at the Fairmont Hotel so that they could talk about the business. The hotel was in walking distance from the company, and you could see it through the window of their offices, so she felt safe enough to go by herself. She did tell her co-workers, and they agreed to call the police if she was not back in time. The next day, she arrives at the hotel early. She finally spots him at the desk check-in table. She goes up to him and realizes he's checking into a room. She is getting a bit weirded out because all he said was that he wanted to have lunch in the restaurant there. He explains to her that he has a whole briefcase full of stuff that he wanted to present to her, and that it would be more private to show her in the hotel room. After a bit of arguing between my mom and him, he finally persuades her to go to the room. The check-in staff looked a bit skeptical while he handed him the key. He got in the elevator, and that is when she realized he does not even have a briefcase. And it wouldn't be in the room already because he had just checked in. Instead of getting the hell out of there like a normal person would, she follows him to the room. She takes the chair by the window while he lays down on the bed with his arms crossed behind his head. He can tell that she is uncomfortable, so he asks her what her dream car was and said she could afford it in a few months by modeling for him. He said all she would have to do was wear different kinds of clothing and lingerie and stand in separate partition rooms while buyers from all around the world would bid on the outfits or bid on her. After his spiel in the company, he asked her to take her clothes off so he can see her body because she needs to have a good figure to be able to model. Again, she is iffy, but he persuades her to get undressed in the bathroom and walk in a towel so he can get a good look at her. While she is in the bathroom, she hears him talking in a different language and laughing on the phone. She walks out in her towel, and he tells her to do a spin while he's still on the phone. But she gets freaked out and runs back into the bathroom to get dressed again. She opens the door and bolts out the room. He stands up and watches her run down the hallway, but luckily doesn't follow her. She tells her co-workers all about it, but she does not call the police because my mom was so embarrassed that she was dumb enough to do all of that for him. A few days later while walking into work, she sees a bunch of cop cars surrounding the building. She later finds out by a co-worker that the guy was arrested for solicitating of prostitution. I think that is what he was charged for, at least. She was freaked out that she could have gotten in trouble for getting into that situation, but the officers never asked her to come in for questioning. Two weeks later, while walking to her parked car in a back alley, she saw him sitting in his car watching her with a big smirk on his face. I guess that he got out on bail. She ran to her car and sped out of there. That was the last time that she ever saw him, and she moved back home a few months later. So, creep, stay away from my mom, and let's not ever meet. About two years ago, my SO and one of my friends decided to utilize a nice, somewhat warm day to fill up the tires on the motorcycles and just kind of cruise around. We set off deciding on a nearby gas station that has an air pump on the side of the building. The lane with the pump also has a large parking lot opposite of the building for reference. We pull in, both motorcycles parked next to the pump, and what appeared to be a homeless man approached and was standing near me, making comments about the bike. No big deal. We're used to having people ask questions, 
or older crowds share their stories of back when they used to ride, and we love hearing about these stories. This man was different, and scared me shitless. I'm a small-framed female, so I made a point to try keeping away from him, but he kept standing closer to me. Our friend was agitated, and my boyfriend was baffled by some of the man's comments, which started off innocent, such as, Oh man, I love motorcycles. I would love to go on a ride with you. But then they changed to, Why don't you drop that hooker back off at the corner, and we can go on a ride together? Uh, what? There were multiple comments made about myself being a hooker, a whore, etc. My boyfriend is a very even-tempered guy, but his friend is not. The situation escalated to where I think the man was attempting to touch the motorcycles, and my boyfriend's friend ended up yelling at the guy, who then ran across the bare parking lot and into the alleyway. We didn't want to take off because we were heading that way, and slightly scared that the man would try to do something as we rode by. Boyfriend's friend and I walked to the edge of the alley and looked towards the way the man went, and find him running in circles, yelling incoherently in the middle of the alleyway. We went the other direction. So, crazy dude at the gas station, let's not meet again. When I was a kid, I used to go to the Smoky Mountains and stay with my friend and her family for a few days a week. One time, my friend's dad drove me and my friend down to Asheville, which was about an hour and a half away. My friend and I had a lot of makeup that day because we were preteen girls, and we were having fun with makeup. Even with the makeup, it was still very obvious that we were children. We went into a mellow mushroom to sit down and eat when a man, who was probably in his 30s or 40s, started talking to my friend. The situation quickly turned sinister when it became apparent that the man thought my friend's dad was a pimp, and he was interested in my friend. I'm pretty sure my friend's dad threatened to disembowel the guy and then we all promptly left and drove back to the mountain. My friend's dad had to explain to us later what had happened and why we went home so abruptly. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.